All right, so this is another fantastic matchup between two teams that have a lot of history with each other. Alabama and Texas A&M will take on each other this Saturday, 2.30 p.m. Central Time, 3.30 p.m. Eastern Time on CBS. There was a lot of history between these two schools. Let me outline it for you here before I, I dive into the analysis of this game. Stuart Bell, Alabama's president, went to Texas A&M. Greg Byrne, Alabama's athletics director. His father was the athletic director for Texas A&M. And Paul Bear Bryant was the head coach at Texas A&M before he was the head coach at the University of Alabama. So there is a strange connection between these two schools, which just adds another layer to this matchup. I, just, I think it's, that's so interesting. This game, this was the exact scenario two years ago when... Texas A&M beat Alabama in College Station. It's the exact same week that happened. It's the exact same venue. But this Alabama team is slowly getting into rhythm. They're finding identity. They're building confidence. And individual players are starting to emerge. I've loved what I've seen of Malachi Moore on defense. He's been phenomenal, but probably one of the most ferocious players uh, on the defensive side of the ball in college football. Chris Braswell has really started to break out this year. I, I've seen great things out of him. And on offense, Samari Nyblack, their tight end, has been phenomenal. And you're you're going to continue to become acquainted with his name because he's been a real force on the offensive side of the ball for the Crimson Tides. It's, it, it's, it's looked sloppy at times. It hasn't been the sexiest football, but since that, that, that second half against Ole Miss, Alabama has slowly but surely been building momentum and building confidence. But this this game is their their first real road test of the year. And it, it happens to be against another SEC West team who has no losses in the SEC yet. Which, which, which makes this game all the more fascinating. Because if Alabama wins this game... They become 5-1, and one, and and you start to re reflect on this season. And you come to find that, that they lost a game at home to who could, a, a team that could potentially be the number one team in the nation. And that South Florida game really starts to look like an experiment where Alabama was, was trying to determine who's going to be their quarterback moving forward. Yes, it was a slop fest. Yes, that game was an absolute dumpster fire. But maybe was there some intention behind that game? If Alabama wins, you start to reflect on the season and contemplate those things. But if Alabama loses this game, Texas A&M will take sole possession of the SEC West. And they will control their destiny on their path to Atlanta. Because their only loss this year has been to Miami, who a lot of people think is a really good team. And they haven't lost a game to an SEC team yet. If, if Alabama wins, though, they only have one loss to a non-conference opponent in Texas. So it starts to look really good for them, and they would be in sole possession of the SEC West moving forward, and they would control their own destiny. There, There's so many stakes in this game for a game that it, it takes place in the first weekend of October because LSU has two losses, because LSU has an SEC loss, because Ole Miss has an SEC loss to Alabama. I think your four best teams definitively in the SEC West are as follows. Alabama, Texas A&M, LSU, and Ole Miss. Two of them already have a loss in the SEC, and one of those teams I mentioned beat another one of those teams that I mentioned. So these, these are the two undefeated teams with their SEC records remaining in the SEC West. This, this game is so important. It's, it's all going to come down to managing errors. For, for Alabama playing a, a complete game, minimizing penalties. You, you can't have scores taken back against this team because unlike Mississippi State and respect to the Bulldogs, but uh, unlike Mississippi State, Texas A&M is, is, is a team that will make you pay for errors, especially on the road at, at Kyle Field. They are absolutely unforgiving in that stadium, but I, I Alabama has a lot more of an identity than they did two, three weeks ago. So it's going to be a lot more imposing of a challenge for the Aggies to face. Now, let's, let's talk about those, those Aggies for a few minutes here. 
Connor Wegman is down for the year. He's out for the year with an injury. This this A and M team has really started to to face the injury bug. That's that's very unfortunate. So Max Johnson will be taking over for him. And while Connor Wegman is more of a surgical passer, he he will carve your defense up. Max Johnson is, is more of a deep threat kind of guy, He's more of an aerial threat than Connor Wegman, which is something that concerns me with the matchup against Alabama because they're not great defending the deep ball. When they when they're facing a team that runs the ball a lot, they're with that defensive line. They're they're able to to, to swallow them up. But when they they face somebody that's that's a deep threat, and mind you, Texas A&M, you've got Anaya Smith, you've got Moose Muhammad's. They, they, they they've got some phenomenal. They've got um, Evan Stewart. They got phenomenal receivers. So this this is a very threatening team from an aerial perspective in Texas A&M. So. Alabama's going to have their hands full covering that if Max Johnson happens to be on. And their, their, their tight end, Donovan Green, went down for the year back in August. That's that, that's another huge blow to that offense. But will, will they continue to pick up the pieces? Will they continue to be able to repair that offense and continue to find an identity even without those guys? This is a huge test for, for A&M on Saturday because if they can win this game... The narrative around Texas A&M becomes, why not us? We beat Alabama. We, we we continue to win with all these players missing. Why not us? Why wouldn't we deserve a shots in, in Atlanta this this December? And it will definitely be a huge source of confidence for that team. This game is going to be a tight one. It's going to be just like it was back in 2021, just like it was last year. There's going to be a lot of hitting. Both teams are greats defensively. Ultimately, I can't pick against Alabama. I I, I, I think they've had great momentum these past couple weeks. I think it's going to continue. I'm, I'm taking the Tide 31-24, to 24, but it's going to be a great matchup on, on, on CBS this, this Saturday afternoon. I, I, I can't decide if I'm going to get Bojangles to watch this game or if I'm going to make some buffalo chicken dip. But whatever I eat alongside this game, it's 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 gonna go well with the product that I'm watching on TV. Have a great day. Thank you so much for watching this video. I really appreciate you and the time that you took out of your day to watch the video. And if you enjoyed it, please be sure to like the video and share it as well as subscribe to the era. The more likes and subscribers I get on this channel, the more resources I can attain, and the more resources I can attain the more value I can provide to you, the viewer. And that is how I show my appreciation for you for the time that you devote to watching my videos. So thank you so much and have a great day.